there's enough light I haven't done my hair uh, let's just film and because I'm going to work in about an hour or so I decided to make another batch of cinnamon rolls only I just realized I've run out of cinnamon da so I've got to actually rush to like a corner shop to quickly get some cinnamon so I can make this and share the recipe with as I've promised to Josh who's Freiberg and then she asked what's the what's your recipe I thought I'll share what I do um, let me get the magazine uh, it, it's behind the camera um, that's where I keep my cook and baking books that I'm often using um, I have another place higher up on another shelf but just behind the camera in my kitchen cabinet it's like a wooden kitchen cabinet which I inherited my mum gave me it like it's a hand-me-down it's from my childhood kitchen and I absolutely love it and yeah and there is like this place where I can keep my baking and cooking books this taproot uh, issue was called trade it is issue number 23. Uh, Taproot is an advertising free American kind of crafting and it's it's in that whole area of homesteading. It's um, I think Soul Mama is the woman who, who who runs it but I'm sure there's like a whole team of people and it's from this kind of homesteady uh, background and it's always full of really interesting articles and 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 the recipes and 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 so there's lots of things in here and this issue has a really nice baking section uh, the baking section which is called it's uh, so this is the cinnamon roll recipe they call them apple and cinnamon buns. Um, I call them Zimtschnecken because in Germany we say cinnamon snails. So I've decided to call mine that. And this is the this is the chapter um, by Demetria Prova Provatas. Demetria Provatas has a really interesting Instagram as well. And I think she does like local trade 
fairs and markets with her pies and things. So she is a really great um, foodie person to follow, I think. And yeah, in this uh, article, you can also ice it. You can add some like cream cheese frosting, which I don't do. And what I use from this is actually just a filling recipe. Um, I will, I think, and that's why I don't feel so bad about sharing it here in Vlogmas because I'm not sharing the actual dough making recipe, which is like the main part of the baking because I'm like, uh, I'm using a shortcut, which is this, it's uh, enriched dough, which is ready made in my supermarket fridge. Um, it's Tante Fanny in Germany. I really like them because they also have uh, yeast. Uh, they have spell options for their yeasted doughs because we often make this kind of quick and easy pizza in the evenings. The kids love choosing their own topics and everybody likes choosing their own. So as a family, we buy three of the pizza doughs um, with spelt because I prefer eating spelt. This one is a yeasted wheat um, dough and it has butter and sugar in it so it's already enriched and I will roll that out and um, do like a little stop frame motion of me making yet another batch of cinnamon snails and I'll um, yeah I'll write the kind of ingredients of the filling over the top first I've got to quickly dash and get some cinnamon or I might I might bother my neighbor I might bother Ada I think I'm going to do that, just ask for a little bit of cinnamon and then I can make some cinnamon snails and this will be added to my Adventism because I think I've already said in Friday Vlogmas that this weekend I will definitely have to do like a glued together weekend version, it will be the Adventism.
Hi there. Welcome to Adventism episode number two of the Young Chicks podcast. It's the weekend special of my Vlogmas and today is the 12th of December so this will be the 11th and the 12th day of Vlogmas kind of super glued together and I would have shared some Saturday actions in the intro or maybe some glimpses of what to expect, what kind of things I might be talking about. Uh, my name is Mimi and I have an Instagram account called Libred and I run this Yajix podcast. Um, we've recently hosted the Stash Went Swap, so every day people are opening little parcels from someone else's stash in their countdown calendars. We have, I think, a couple of solstice calendars. We've got um, Christmas calendars, the Hanukkah calendar already finished and uh, there has been knitting. I love the shawl that Zara has made. I'm also knitting something and I'm going to show you that now. bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time it's clear to see from up here the world seems small we can sit together it's so beautiful, you and me, we meant to be, in the great outdoors, forever free. My stash rent was given to me by Frauke, who is man, uh, Mandel Protect Pimpinel on Instagram. And I'm knitting the hiber, I keep saying hibernation shawl because that's truly what I want. But I'm knitting the, what I'm truly am knitting is the habitation throw by a curious handmaid. And uh, yeah, this is day 11 I'm knitting with, this is the right side actually, I should show you with the stitch marker. Um, day 11 for my stash went action were this bundle of tiny kind of embroidery floss I think woolly really thin lace weight yarns in plant day colors by Kult. Gult is like a, a I think Danish plant dye company and this is amazing. This is like such a treat, Frauke. I can't believe it. I'm using this light uh, violet um, and I'm holding it double with a uh, Navetta sock yarn, which is actually something someone has already unpacked in their stash vent. In the one that I sent, it is one of my stash yarns. And I'm holding them together, pairing them, so that I can have this kind of really soft marl. I hope it shows kind of trying to look on the little screen to see. I think it's really pretty and I really love how the um, Woola Pick um, clashed with this Let Lopi in the rust colour and all in all it's such a nice palette. It's so, I mean there's so much plant dyed colour in this. Um, it's gorgeous. It's, it's actually like a true treasure and I am super grateful and feel totally um, joyous and lucked out about this swap.
It's around 7 a.m. I think, or maybe 6.30 on Sunday 12th December and um, I just recorded the evacuation kind of call out in the street. It's absolutely crazy, like, but that's just how it is. I've just gathered some stuff that I need to take and I'll pack a bag and then we're off and um, we'll be taking like a It's just easier to take a car, so we'll find a car along the roadside, like a rental that I can rent for 24 hours, and then we'll drive there. So, um, yeah, I'm taking my stash rent. Uh, we already took them off, but I will open them in the daylight once I've driven us out there. Because now it's evacuation time.
So we left the boys with the luggage at the station and now we're walking to get a roadside rental. So this morning we um, drove here because of the um, evacuation area that I live in. Basically in uh, November they found a old World War II bomb which hadn't exploded. Um, um, which happens often actually. I think there was recently one in Munich and some of the bomb disposal unit I don't know something went wrong there so I'm like oh my god I hope everything goes well we had to get out of the house at the break of dawn and I recorded some of the announcements that were happening in the street and I recorded us and all our luggage I'm really sorry I'm like holding the camera like this because I've got two bags on like my shoulder and it was a bit of a random quick escape I got up at six in the morning with my partner because he goes to work um, often also on a Sunday so um, he left and I got up had a cup of tea and did some weaving and I filmed all of this for the vlogmas so I hope you enjoy my kind of little vlogmas clips. Um, the other project I would have um, kind of shared in and out of um, the um, vlogmas last week already and uh, potentially already here in the in the kind of arrival time here is a scarf I'm knitting from cashmere 
for my eldest child. And I guess it looks like extremely weird. It's just a super long cast on because I've got around 250 stitches and it's holding yarns double, which is a technique called Marlisle. And it's the Ruperto scarf from this book, Marlisle uh, New Direction in Knitting, which is an um, kind of inventive, yarny um, technique that Anna Maltz developed through her book Penguin and Knit Direction where she had the Humboldt sweater and I knitted this and I um, I knitted the penguin often from that book and I test knitted also for for this publication so I'm like uh, super interested in going back to this Marlisle technique. Part of the reason I have not really spoken about it is that actually um, Anna Maltz is not really in our kind of circles anymore. She left the social media realm. I'm, I'm sure she's still knitting and creating stuff and I was connected for a while but it was all due to kind of being called in and called, called out about stuff and she never really decided to publicly kind of post maybe the writing she'd done for Pom Pom and there was a big fallout some of which I understand, some of which I don't. And I know that I've stepped on people's toes already in the past by mentioning this. And I definitely stepped on Anna's toes because I messaged her at the time and asked why there was no, you know, why, why she chose to kind of be quiet. And I, I understand people make these choices, but it's, it's still sad. It's still a sad loss. And I still feel really close to her creations and her creativity was always like, you know, it was always there and it was always like, she was also very political and very outspoken and this whole way of of not understanding maybe the responsibilities of gatekeeping. But I'm, I'm, I still have this belief that with certain numbers of followers, certain positions in our knitting community, you just have the responsibility to do things and when things go bad and you feel hurt by them it's not necessarily about you and your hurt it's more about kind of making a situation better and learning and making it making and moving forward that is important for the bigger picture for the change that we all push for and to do that we have to change our own behavior away from being sensitive about how we feel we know what we're doing or we feel we've done enough but if somebody else feels hurt or um, kind of points the finger at a sore spot then they're not doing that um, just to you know as as an upset or whirl up things but they're doing it for a reason and for the good reason of wanting that change and so to achieve that change we've got to look inward and do the stuff I hope that that is maybe what's happening away from the social media and I also understand that social media is this awkward place but we're all kind of in it and consuming in it like consuming as in achieving the entertainment we seek from it or the distraction we seek so uh, I feel like um, you know if, if that's something we consume there's something we can put back into it and even if that's just kind of like acknowledging the roles and the responsibilities we hold. And I hope that I do this and I know that I can't always get it right and that the mistakes are basically where I can learn. Because I know this is like a big like area of um, important, really important conversation. And you know, I wanna keep it going. knitting the Rupert, Ruperto scarf because I want to reconnect to that. I don't want to go, Oosh. 
I'm not sure if I will do this kind of free promotion thing that Instagram is, you know, I, I might not do that, but that is my choice. Um, I still feel the drive to use um, this particular yarn in this particular pattern, maybe to revisit the emotions and the feelings of, did I, you know, did I talk about what I thought in a clear enough way? So I am reflecting things whilst knitting this and I'm knitting from a really amazing um, uh, cashmere yarn present that I got from Josh and uh, also a cashmere sock yarn which had the right um, colour that my son wanted as the main contrast colour. It's the Mine Ride Lana Cossack Cashmere. It is like a classic sock yarn so it has 210 meter on 50 grams and it's a 5% cashmere uh, yarn and this is like 100% cashmere so it's very soft and tender and um, the way I connect Hoparto scarf to uh, Josh and Anna Maltz is actually I only really managed to ever meet Josh in real life in the real person and we had a proper hug because this was before corona times around my birthday in 2018 so just before I went to Edinburgh for the first time I went to Rotterdam to the book launch of this amazing book and I met the amazing human being that is Josh Breiwerken or Josh Moll who is Breiwerken and um, we have become friends and she's supported my creativity and she's just been such an inspiration and um, yeah it's just such a good connection that I wouldn't have had if if not for for that community around the Moral Isle book. And Josh sent me this amazing parcel with loads of these and I'm using the darker and grayer and blue colors for my eldest child who decided they needed a scarf and they truly do. They're borrowing their father's scarf. So <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, maybe uh, that is a need for somewhere else. Um, so, as I said, the main color is this green um, and the contrast color is the cashmere, um, this kind of smaller yarn cakes that I was sent and I'm um, kind of changing them up. So this scarf will have vertical and horizontal stripes. It is going to be so much fun. It's um, kind of has this woven effect which I'm, I haven't started knitting yet so I can't show you and I'm I'm excited to kind of make it quite um, multicolored yet in a kind of subtle color way it feels a lot like weaving oops sorry <laughs> knocked the table it feels a lot like weaving which I'm also doing and I'm quite intrigued at kind of putting these two um, scarves next to each other I'm not sure if I will finish the knitted scarf for Christmas though. <laughs> Maybe I took on something too big there. So yeah, that is the third project that I wanted to show you. So the third and last project in my kind of uh, Adventism special which will kind of show you some of my vlogmas filming as well is um, the woven scarf project you would have seen this uh, in vlogmas day um, eight or nine I think vlogmas day nine on Thursday Thursday was the ninth yeah so on, th on the ninth uh, day of my yarn chicks vlogmas I kind of took you along to the studio where I was um, working on this and I always have to be extra careful because with weaving if you get it tangled it, it's a lot of time <laughs> time untangling before you can carry on weaving and um, my secret plan is to uh, weave once once I've put the kids to bed here. I'm on my own, as, as I said, my partner is at work and they will probably sleep in their office during our evacuation phase. 
Um, so I, I, you know, I'll take them to bed and probably be quite late and I'm, I'm going to try and weave um, at least what I've brought. I've brought, I've got two more shuttles like this and I've got about 80 centimeters of a scarf rolled up on here. Let me carefully. I'm very like new to weaving so I'm very still kind of I don't want to tangle things and I don't want to make mistakes because my friend is not here who helps me with this and um, you know when I went to the, her studio and we hung out I actually had lots of help from her which was great oh my god yeah and it, it tangles because I've kind of left the end bits um, maybe I'll weave them in tonight as well this is how far I've come god this is a reveal even for myself it's maybe a third of a scarf by now and as you can tell you know I'm, I'm still learning it's kind of warped in places but it's generally pretty straight look at this texture and I've used this kind of um, baker's twine to to begin so that just have like a base that's relatively solid and I've got to a two color a B color warp so two colors and then I'm using this gray which is uh, Kamaose Snefnuk uh, it is a cotton alpaca and fine merino blend yarn so it's a tube that has been blown you know alpaca and wool fiber has been blown into this cotton tube and that's maybe the best way i can describe it so it's very fluffy and um kind of it's thick but fluffy and light which is perfect for this weaving thing this weaving project because i want to get somewhere quick and i feel like maybe it'll be two skeins of the snefnook that i need i will see that's why i want to finish whatever I brought so I've got this I want to finish that tonight once everybody sleeps fingers crossed I won't fall asleep I've been falling asleep every evening with the kids this week I've like zoned out yesterday I was so knackered I fell asleep at six I think it's just too busy in the wool shops so I'm like uh, I have this kind of overload brain and I just go oh, I fall asleep on the sofa or yesterday I fell asleep in my kids bed squeezed into this little corner so I hope I don't fall asleep tonight I will finish weaving this amount of yarn that's at least that's my plan so that's about three shuttles and then yeah I'm excited um then I know how much one ball of the Snefnook um crafts like how far I get and um if if this is like manageable for me like time wise if I can carve out some time I might make a second one so I can actually gift a pair of uh, scarves oh see now this has happened that's happened last time I packed it up as well I kind of cinch it too much and uh, oh, I'll fix that tonight careful 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 the loom I'm using is a, um, a backstrap loom that, um, yeah, my my friend kindly um, had cut for us. We're like both getting really excited to craft more and more with backstrap looms, and I've, I got a set of two of these, which is amazing. It's basically a Christmas present I gave myself early, and I'm using it to make uh, Christmas presents. So that's kind of like good right use you know give yourself something like a new nice crafting tool get into a new craft and, and you've got all those presents <laughs> um this is kind of what i've brought out here and uh yeah what i wanted to talk about today and um i will show some of the saturday and sunday clips um you would have seen me light the third candle and that's it for the second Adventism. This week has been um, intense. 
I'm making a little list. I might film myself making it, but I might be just sharing it in Vlogmas episode in the next one, the number 13, <laughs> um, is I'm going to make a little countdown for myself for Christmas so that I can um, tick off some of these uh, heavy duty work days. <laughs> I've got seven more work days and then I've got five days off and then I work three more days and then I've got another five days off. That's kind of how my holiday will be. So in order to get excited, like we used to with the kids do this for their birthdays or for special occasions like Christmas, we used to make little um, lists where you could tick off, you mark little special occasions on this list or special moments and then you know how quickly it passes. So as I have seven more work days, I'm going to make a list of seven days, seven boxes that I can tick and I'll make a little take some notes beside of it. Because of this evacuation, it's Sunday the 12th and today I was going to go and print those scenes and to be honest, already trying to sort everything out for the evacuation, talking to all the neighbours, making sure everybody knew, making sure my kids were informed but not scared, organising what we had to pack because we were meant to take valuables. I'm really sorry but that was my main concern is that we will have a break in during this time because there's some evil people. <laughs> and I live in a you know house that also has some you know reasons to believe that people might want money and might take laptops iPads jewelry and so I was like oh how do I do this so I've kind of think I've set up and I can calm down my worries because whatever happens happens this evacuation needed to happen so I did what I've sold and I brought what I thought I should bring. I almost brought all my knitted scarves and all my kind of patchwork, the patchwork present my friend gave me. I was like, almost like, oh my God, all this stuff is so valuable. Nobody knows like, but me, how much I care for it. And I don't want any explosions and I don't want any of this stuff to get lost. But, you know, I could have brought a whole household. I was kind of connected to my kids worries and I'm early morning kind of set off and, and like having to pack things that were actually valuable and you realize what value hold what items in your household hold value for whom and how we all dealt with it was very different but that was it was good to go through with through it I'm happy I'm here. I'm by the fire. It's got, like I'm getting hotter now. I'm, I was wearing the hat because I was very cold in here, but the fire, fire is on and we get to have like a snowy walk now and then we'll have our lunch in this lovely corner of our Baowang Isabel. And I think early on in Vlogmas, I was like, oh, I want to go, I want to go. And here I am now. So fate brought me out here. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm happy I can enjoy it and I'm also very happy I could take you along. So for the outro, I'll share some more um, vlogmas -y stuff. I'll share some of the scenery, the snowy goodness that's happening outside of our Baowang, our wooden home. And I am grateful for this privilege um, to have this space to come to that is a home to me and that I can just go to if I have to. If something in the city is not right, I can come here. How lucky am I? I mean, thank you, Isabel. Um, and also, I would have shared a little recipe with a little kind of Mimi hack um, for the cinnamon snails that I shared in the vlogmas and uh, Josh asked me to kindly like she's like can you share the recipe so I'm sharing what I'm doing and it's gonna be fun because you'll realize that I've got a good hack <laughs> I've got it. it it makes it quick and it makes it doable on a school morning so I hope you enjoy all my kind of bits and bobs of vlogmas and then see you again for the third candle next weekend Today was advertism number two and I thank you for your time that you joined me here. Thank you for all your lovely comments and your ways of reaching out and connecting to me through this funny vlog. Um, I'm just grateful to know you and that you come and visit. Thank you so much. It, it's really kind of you. Well, see you tomorrow for the 13th day of Vlogmas. Bye for now. <laughs> oh, and 
also, um, yeah, I would have just shown you my funny setup for the tripod because I found my tripod, it was out here. But see, in that place, I need this little nozzle that goes on the bottom of the camera that goes in here. Otherwise, this tripod doesn't work. Where is the bloody nozzle thing? I do not know. 